Hi, I'm Pete, and welcome to Just a Few Acres Farm. I'm back to work today in the shop. It's cold and nasty outside, fixing the sloppy shifting on my Farm All 756. My new parts came from Red Run Right, same place that I ordered the MCV parts. These are the new shifting arms and what they go on here, and these linkages, and I got an 86 series parking pawl retrofit kit. You may remember that I had all kinds of play in these things where they went on to the old shaft. They were really wobbly. I'm not even going to put it on there, but I had all kinds of wear in here, and so I got all new parts for that. And then the linkage that goes on here, which is two ball joints and an adjustable length, you know, I said, well, that's kind of loose. I think I'll replace it. It turns out really the new ones I got really aren't that much tighter, but while I'm in here redoing it, it's just a good idea to do. First thing we got to do here is put these new clips into the new dinghy hoo and this helps to hold the shifter paddle tight when you have it in one range or the other you gotta bend a little bit i like that you're springy but you're a little too springy right now here's the other one we got two you know we'll get on there Remember I had a severe grease deficiency in the old setup, it had never been greased, and the grease circ on this one was right down here, which would ride toward the bottom front, bottom front of the tractor, very hard to find. The new ones came with a hole drilled in here, and I put a push-in grease circ in here, and I think it'll be much easier to grease from the top. That's my thought anyway. Before I put these on, I want to put on the linkages that go on and I want to match the length of the old linkage so I'm in the right neighborhood when I put everything together. These are all adjustable. Then install this on this. Yep. This on this. Get on there. What do you have? Performance anxiety? There you go. And there are two ready to go. Here are my new pieces. This is my new center that the arms rotate on. And grease was, I don't know if grease is that big an issue. It's not like it's a shaft that's spinning all the time, but keeping it greased is important. It's just a question of the frequency anyway. <laughs> Having said all that, the grease gun greases it in here. There's a hole that allows the grease to go into here, and then you have grooves in the shaft that allow the grease to work around, and you've got a connecting groove here, and it's even got a pair of holes on that allow it to go to the inside here. But as you see, it's not really that tight a fit into this, so I expect that the grease builds up and may help to lubricate this shoulder here. I don't know. Grease it well, and you won't have any regrets, I guess, is the attitude I'm using. Now there is a replaceable bushing right in here. You can barely see the lip of it, but when I test fit this, it fit nice and tight, so no worries there. In fact, I have to use a little persuasion to send it home. Not much. This shouldn't spin. The levers spin on this. This itself doesn't spin. This spins inside this, but this stays fixed. Give this a coating of grease. And this inner shifter goes on. Remember, this one controls low range and high range and neutral. Oh, that fits nice. No play in there at all. Hook up this linkage here. You know, you have performance anxiety too. Don't worry, it'll be all right. There we go. Next comes this middle collar, which the lever is anchored onto, the range lever, and it rotates around here. Then comes the outer doodad, which controls, you gotta get up there, controls reverse. I moved you guys, you probably still can't see the linkage, but it comes off and goes right down in there fits onto this there. That's really all there is to it. There's lots of folks putting in these kits. You know, this is such a common problem for the 56 series tractors. And really you've got one, two, three, four pieces, including this 
sleeve in here and that does a world of difference for tightening up the shifting. Next we're going to put the range lever on and I kind of have my doubts about this. This is a new shoulder bolt going in here but I've still got a good amount of movement so I might have to do some additional fixing. We'll try it though. It's got to go into those new clips I put in and they are tight. Once it's into them I don't think it'll leave them but you got to get it in. Wow. Huh. Interesting. I think what I'll do is take these clips off and put them on after I get the lever in. See if that works any better. Now with the clips out I can slide this in and get it anchored. I may be taking this all back apart and putting a bushing in this arm. I don't know. We'll see how it feels. Why you gotta be so difficult? You know, I did want to get some other things done today. That's all tightened down. And you know, it's not such a big concern that that shoulder bolt is still a little loose. There's a little wear inside the collar there. Because this rotates freely. And it, the only kind of movement you're going to get is end to end. And it's really just not there. It's something, it's really not a big deal. My vote is to put this back together and it's not that hard to take back apart if it bugs me. Now I believe these clips will be easier to put in. I got one around the shifting paddle here. Now I see why these broke. They probably didn't last long on these tractors before they got busted from people slamming the shifter around and just by the way they're designed. Well, it went in. Man, that's, once you get it in there, it's not going to slide out now. I guess I kind of like that. Yep. There we go. Wow, that's, I expect that'll loosen up. In fact, it already did. That one is bent outward a little bit but it does catch that in there nicely whereas before there was nothing to really catch it in there and it could wobble around. Now we can put the speed transmission shifter on you know the one two three four lever. First we got a key that goes in the end of the shaft here because that shifter rotates the shaft. Well get on there. Looks like a hammer to me. Well maybe this is a hammer too. Well, I don't know. That's not a good, that's a better hammer. In order to get you to come out a little bit, I got to reach over the other side here and push on the other side. There we go. You're five eighths. You fooled me. This up and down is that shaft running through. It runs through this housing in here. And then it's bare when it comes out here, so it's really just this length. The book shows a bunch of bushings, but I looked down the hole and it was quite clear around the shaft. So that's a little confusing. It must be this bushing right here. There's actually three bushings that go in there. And 11 is a transmission cross shaft bushing I assume that that's the one that if I was to replace anything it would be that and actually look and I think I missed ordering something because there's a bushing inside this old thing and that's where the transmission cross shaft goes I'll bet that's the bushing I need take a back part and take a look if you haven't done things twice you haven't done them right all right I got that all back apart fortunately it only takes a minute to get it apart and you can see yeah that bushing right in there is what stabilizes the end of that shaft from doing this and my new shaft does not have that bushing in it so we're gonna see if we can knock this one out and reuse it bushing driver you know I clean this up 
and it's not bad at all. I don't see any bad wear in it. And when I slide it onto the shaft here and seat it where it sets, it's good and tight. I think I can reuse that. That's not something I would have done if I'd known about it. I would have ordered it with the new parts, but I didn't know and I really don't want to wait another five days, so I'm going to put it in. I'm swapping this bushing end for end to even out any wear that it does have, but there seems to be very little. And then we got a grease hole in here we got to line up. What the heck's going on here? Oh, there's a groove in there, so it really doesn't matter if the grease holes line up because there's a grease passage. I see. Think about these things a little bit. Well, we'll still try and line up the holes even though there's a passage. An annular ring, if you would like. Let's see how it all fits together here. I think I've done this before. We gotta line up the bushing. Boy, that's nice. Oh yeah, I like that. And through the magic of television, all back together, we got reversage. We got no detentage though, so we can just move things back and forth. Feels awful good. We took the slop out of this up and down. I think we're in good shape. That one's got the tap because it's still plugged in. Hey, look at this. I am holding the top of this rod in place. What's going on here? It's not supposed to do that. When I hold the rod on the other one and try and turn it, no can do. Something's wrong. It's that right there. See that spring pin sticking out? It's worked its way out and it's probably egged out that hole. Oh, that's not gonna be easy to fix. I disconnected the linkage on this plate here so I can roll this over to where I can maybe pull this out. Yeah. Hmm. Passage of time, I had to go out to the hardware store. This is the pin that came out. It's actually, it's a solid pin and I suspect it's probably tapered because it runs from 2.55 down to about 2.50, 2.51. It's hard to tell because of wear, but I'm not surprised, wouldn't be surprised if it's a tapered pin. I wound up getting a quarter inch spring pins, which are oh, 2 point, or 0.258. So I'm hoping they have enough spring compression in them to tighten that up. We'll see. pins in there and I still got wiggle and that's only going to get worse. We better fix this right. I'm going to drive that pin back out. This paddle down here is connected to a rod that goes straight up and that rod terminates up here so we got to take this bracket off we pull the whole thing out. Two bolts out. I'm going to work the wiring to the side here. There we go. Not something that I planned on doing, but so be it. There's that where it seats in there. Oh, there's an O-ring in the bottom. It must go into the transmission case. And this bracket with a little kind of ball joint on the top is also a wear item, and you can get replacements of these from the same spots you get the shift kit that I ordered, but this one's in fine shape. So here's my bracket, which whichever way it goes on, and everything's egged out. This hole's egged out. The bracket's egged out. Yeah, it's all eggy. And that is why when I was at the hardware store, I not only got a quarter inch spring pen, but I also got a 5 16th inch spring pen. We're just going to send the 5 16th drill right down through here. Now we have round holes here <laughs> that are tight to the spring pen and round holes here that are tight to the spring pen. We'll set this back in place. Slide the shaft back down to its home. I greased it up a little bit. That'll make it work well, hopefully. You gotta go back down in. You gotta find your home. Where's your home? There we go. Absolutely no play now. Well, it was worth the time. Now when I shift, I get tight action on these paddles down here. So that's low, neutral, high, and then if I go over into reverse, that's reverse. Everything feels really tight. Absolutely no movement there anymore. 
On to the next job, but unfortunately here, I'm stuck. When I ordered my parts, I did not order a replacement for this thing right down here, which is the low high detent plate. And I've got <laughs> detents in the middle of each. So here's low or high, I don't remember which, but I've got a detent right there, mid shift, and then I've got neutral, and then I've got a detent mid shift, and then I've got high. So I'll have to wait for another day after my parts come in to finish the work. Every tractor I buy, this kind of work is so important, I think, and you're probably going to run into it with most any old tractor you buy. I think having the controls feel solid helps a lot with your confidence operating the tractor. Things like shifting, steering, braking, throttle response, you need to be able to rely on all those. And second to that is that the gauges are working, that you know how many RPMs you're turning, the temperature of the engine and the coolant, and the oil pressure you're running. It's just normal stuff, and it's one of the things that somebody who's owned an old tractor like this for years and years, they kind of fall behind on keeping them up, and so a lot of that stuff normally isn't working. And a final note, or maybe it's a question, Red Power Roundup is a national show that's ha held every year, and it moves around. This year it is in Grand Island, Nebraska, which is a heck of a long ways from here, but it's a special Red Power Roundup because it's the 100th anniversary of the Farm Mall, 1923 to 2023. So I was thinking about traveling out there. It's June 15th to 17th, I think. Taking in the show and maybe doing a series of videos about what I see there, and oh my gosh, there's so much stuff. Not only tractors, but all the memorabilia and collections, and three days worth of stuff, easily. It's gonna be a great show. The question I have for you is, number one, if I went out all the way out to Nebraska, are there folks that would come and see me at the show? And number two, what would you like to see documented at the show? What sorts of things are you interested in in at the national show not only I, rare tractors are certainly a very cool thing and they'll have some great ones there but all the different kinds of other international harvester products and collections and oh my gosh vendors and uh, let me know <laughs> i have no idea what response i'm going to get back but it certainly will be interesting from you folks have a great day and i'll see you next time